Marinero, the sick podcast presented by Cherry River Heart Seltzer. Only 90 calories, natural flavors, no preservatives. Now available in Quebec grocery stores and at the beer store. And joining me today, Stu Cowan from the Montreal Gazette and Hockey Inside Out. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well, Tony. How are you? Very well. So earlier today, Friday morning, 10 o'clock, Jeff Gordon, VP of Hockey Operations of Le Club de Hockey Canadien, had a chance to meet with members of the media, a presser that lasted just under 30 minutes. Stu, your thoughts? I was impressed by him. He was uh, calm, cool, collected, uh, answered questions honestly, uh, started off by reading uh, a statement in French. His French was horrible, as is to be expected from an American who had probably never spoken a word of French in his life before yeah. today. I wonder how many times he must have practiced that in the mirror, reading it over, and I give him A for effort, like I said, credit for going there. Uh, said he's going to do his best to learn uh, the language as well as he can. And he was sort of funny. He said, you know, he said, 30 years ago, I said I was going to become great at golf and I'm still suck. But he says, I'm going to do the best I can. And that's all you can ask for from him as far as I'm concerned. All right. Uh, Stu, his nomination has not been well accepted from um, members of the French media. It has not, for the most part, been well accepted by um um, Francophone fans of the Montreal Canadiens because the way they see it, that position should have belonged to um, uh, someone from Quebec, a Francophone from Quebec. Uh, let's take a look at the front page of the French daily newspaper here, Le Journal de Montréal, several days ago. Uh, good luck, Mr. Gorton, an American et le nouveau patron hockey. Good luck, Mr. Gordon. An American is the new hockey boss. And uh, other than that, it says, uh, Premier Unilang Anglophone, um, 57 ans, I think it says, mm-hmm. au, um, au commande du secteur hockey chez le Canadien. So uh, the first um, unilingual Anglophone in charge of the Montreal Canadiens in uh, just under uh, 60 years. Or is that, is that, is that 57? Is that what it says? Hold yeah. on a second. 57. 57. Let me put on my glasses. All right. I still can't see, but anyway, okay. You know, Stu, um, it doesn't look like the Journal de Montreal took it all that well. No, they didn't. I mean, how much more sarcastic, sarcastic can you get than an all English headline? at the top of the Journal de Montréal. But Tony, I was born and raised here. You too live here. Language is always part of everything that happens in this city, in this province. And the same thing with the Canadians, and maybe even more so with the Canadians. And as you said, you know, a lot of the Francophone media, Francophone fans upset that it's not in Gud Chenu, who is now uh, in charge of the Canadians. It's also uh, sort of amusing that uh, it's a guy who grew up as a fan of the Boston Bruins, and Jerry Cheevers was his favorite player. And... Uh, when I asked him the question today about his earliest memories about the Canadians, he brought up the 1979 too many men on the ice penalty that cost the Bruins a series and remembered stuff being thrown around his house. So uh, not only a, a unilingual American, but a former Bruin uh, fan now running the Canadians. But and Jeff Molson, you know, he had courage to make this decision. He thought that Jeff Gordon was the best available person out there for the job. And after seeing Jeff Gordon today and listening to him, I can understand why he felt that way. And he went out and he did it. I mean, he set it up that there's going to be a uh, French-speaking GM working under him. And I think, you know, all this talk about how they're going to work together. There's no doubt Jeff Gordon is the man in charge right now. And whoever he hires as a GM will be sort of learning on the job under him, uh, which is a better way to learn than the way Mark Bergevin learned. He's, he's going to be a great mentor, Stu. He's going to be a great I, mentor. I agree. And when you see him today, he talked about how he doesn't have an ego and he doesn't worry about titles and stuff like that. And it, 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 you wonder how much different it might have been for Mark Bergevin if he had had Jeff Gordon here when he was hired. Because to me, the problem, Mark Bergevin's downfall was he couldn't take the player out of himself. He was too emotional. And when it came to contract negotiations, he couldn't separate business and personality. And that's why it would come to clashes, whether it was, you know, PK or Radulov or Markov or Pacioretty. It always seemed to get personal. And Gordon's the opposite of that. Gordon is more of a... He came up through the business side of hockey, starting as a scout with the Bruins, an assistant GM, a GM there, GM of the Rangers. He understands, he looks at it from a business perspective more than the hockey player perspective, whereas Bergeron was a hockey player. And on the ice, you get hit, you get mad, you get, uh, and, and Bergeron carried that over to being a GM. And I think that was his downfall. And that led to a lot of the, guy, the, the confrontations he had, especially in contract negotiations. So imagine now 
if you had Ed Bergevin at that point with someone like Gordon above him and Gordon handling more of the contract negotiations instead of Bergevin, letting Bergevin focus on trades or whatever, yeah. would have been a much better situation. So I think Jeff Molson has set this up well right now with Gordon in charge. Very well, I think. Very well. I actually tip my hat because – it's actually set up better than I thought it was going to be set up. And look, a lot of people are saying the whole two man or two person or uh, could because it could be a woman, too. So it could be two person uh, that it's not going to work. It is going to work because Jeff Gordon is the is the person in charge, period. Yeah. You yeah, said it. I said it now. But that could uh, change, what, Tony. That, like he's coming in in charge without a doubt. Whoever yeah. they bring in is going to be speak French. He's, he's obviously not going to have any experience because the only two francophones with experience as a GM in the NHL are. You know, Mark Bergeron is gone and Julian Griezmann was not leaving Tampa. But for a guy to come in, if it is a Matthew Darsh or if it is a Daniel Briere, the other names we're hearing coming around, it, it Gordon can be the guy in charge to start this rebuild, train the GM under him, and then at some point hand the baton off and sort of step back a little bit more. But he can mold the GM in the way he wants this thing to go forward. We're, we're talking at least three years, in my opinion, still. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And there's a we're, lot of work to be done. I mean, you talked today about how he wants to uh, improve the analytics department. He wants to focus on player development. And he said the GM won't be hired until uh, probably after Christmas. And the, you know what it all said to me, Stu? Um, he's modern day 2021. This is yeah. a modern day general manager uh, who learned the job one way, but has adjusted with the times. Once again, I think it's very refreshing. Unfortunately, Stu, his hiring is not unanimous with everyone. Um, here's a francophone from Quebec. And uh, for all of you listening, um, I'm going to tell you right now, this was heard on um, Sports Radio 91.9 in French a couple of days ago. Um, a francophone Canadians fan called in, not happy with the selection of Jeff Gordon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, ça va tu mal. Oh, ça va pas de type de bon sens. Ben là, on est en deux matchs, là. C'est pas si pire. On n'est pas le lendemain ouais. d'une défaite, là. Écoute, cette semaine, j'ai vécu le pire moment de ma vie. Ben voyons. De ma vie. En tant que partisan. Écoute, ben, Evelyne, là. Si c'est pas rire de tous nous autres, les Québécois, là, pis les partisans du Canada de Montréal, qu'il n'y a pas un maudit joueur, un ancien canadien qui a porté le chandail fièrement du Canada de Montréal, qui n'est pas capable de faire le job de vice-président qu'on est obligé de prendre un Américain qui se fout de nous autres par de sa tête, qui s'en fiche de notre culture, qui s'en fout de nous autres, les Québécois. Ben, mon je t'aille, je mon je t'aille de toi. Mais Victor... Oui, j'entends ça, j'entends ça, mais attends. Mais le... excuse, évidemment. Mais non, c'est correct. Je ne pas faire ça avec toi. Mais non, c'est correct, mais le DG, ça va peut-être être un Québécois. Attends un peu, là. Il va mettre un bouche-trou, il va mettre un no go no bon go pour aller faire le pâté. La girouette, la stick. Mon Dieu, mon Dieu, t'as détruit notre dynastie. T'as détruit le Canadien de Montréal, mon Dieu. Je t'ai mon Dieu. All right. Uh, for those who uh, didn't understand, uh, this very passionate Montreal Canadiens fan is uh, very upset that the Montreal Canadiens put a um, unilingual anglophone as uh, the VP of hockey operations. Um, the fan says that basically Jeff Gordon is the general manager and whoever is going to put there is going to be someone just to, to fill a hole. Um, he went on to say that, uh, you know, Jeff Molson, I dislike you. I dislike you. Uh, you ruined the dynasty of the Montreal Canadiens. You ruined the Montreal Canadiens. I can't believe they couldn't put one former player there, one alumni from Quebec, that they had to go get this unilingual anglophone. Um, wow. It's You know what, Tony? For, for people outside of Quebec, especially anglophones that don't speak French or understand French, wouldn't have understood what he would say, what he was saying. But the passion that he was speaking with just shows you again, highlights how much the Canadians mean to French Quebecers apart from just being a hockey team. For sure. They're part of them. They're part of the culture. They're part of, it means so much more to them than just a hockey team. And as Anglophones who live in, in Quebec, I think can understand that not to the extent a Francophone might, 
but people outside don't understand it. They can't figure it out. Stu, so, Stu, we so, can understand it, but we don't get emotionally involved because yeah. we detach because we realize that at the end of the day, it's a game, it's a sport, mm -hmm. it's a team, it's a club, it's an organization, and the bottom line is winning. And that's why we detach and they don't. And I want to just tackle a couple of things. And, and I'm going to preface it by saying, and I've always said this, and I always will, that if the best candidate to get the Montreal Canadiens back on track and back to their winning ways and to bring a Stanley Cup back to Montreal is a francophone from Quebec, fantastic. Mm -hmm. There will be no one happier than me, and I will endorse it day, afternoon, and night. However, however, I don't buy all the, we absolutely have to bring back an alumni at all costs because they have the CH tattooed on their heart, and they know what it means and this and that and all that stuff because... We've been down this road before. There's more. With all due respect to Ray Jean Houle and Ivan Cournoyer and Mario Tremblay and um, and uh, Steve Schott and Bob Gainey and Guy Carboneau and Rick Green and Kirk Muller and, and the list goes on and on. It, it, and with all due respect to all of these gentlemen, it's it's just it's not because you played here that it means that the Canadians are going to be a winner overnight and you're going to win a cup. It just it doesn't work that way. And just because you're a good player doesn't make you a GM. Being a GM, especially in today's NHL, is about so much more than just hockey. You're running a business, right? You're running a scouting department. You're you're you have your finger in everything. You're running this. You're running a business, and the end product, of course, is what happens on the ice. But you can't just throw somebody in there without having any experience on the job. I mean, Ray John Houle, one of the nicest men you'll ever meet in, in, Great in guy. your life, which is why he's still working for the Canadians, right? For sure. He was put into a, a no-win position with no experience, with a head coach with no experience, and we saw what a disaster that turned out to be. So while Francophone fans can be upset that the new director of hockey operations and, and the GM right now is an American Anglophone, Part of them could also be happy that whoever the French GM, speaking GM is going to be brought in is going to be trained properly. He's going to be have a mentor who understands how the salary cap works, who understands how free agency works, who has a relationship already with the other GMs around the league. They're going to set that man or woman up for success exactly. and not for failure. Exactly. And part of it is contacts, too. I mean, Jeff Gordon was asked today about, well, who's going to talk to the other GMs around the league? Is it you or the GM? And he said, well, I'm already talking to them. They already know who he is, right? Whoever the new GM is that comes in. I mean, of if course. it's Matthew Darsh, the other GMs sort of know who he is. I don't know how much of a, a, a hands-on communication Matthew has had with other GMs around the league. But just to have somebody to come in. I know if I was uh, – Ray Jean Houle, I'm sure, when he was put in that situation, would have wished he had a Jeff Gordon. For sure, 100%. No, anybody. I mean, when I was named sports editor at the Gazette, I was happy I had some other people around me who had been in that position because you have questions. You don't know everything. You're coming in and, and you want to learn from other people. And as I say, Bergeron was put in there without anybody really to learn from. Nobody to tell him, Mark, you have to separate your emotional side from the business side. Business is business and the other stuff's other stuff. You had a mentor as a journalist. I had a mentor as a sports radio yeah. host and, 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 and all of that. Okay, so now Patrick Roy. Let's get to them because it was several days ago that he made his interest be known saying stuff to the effect of, uh, you know, this club has been turning in circles since 1993. What do they have to lose to give me a shot to see what I can do with that club? Then he went on to mention, we all know what the problem was there. The problem was Trevor Timmons and, uh, you know, Mark Bergevin decided to stay loyal to Trevor Timmons. And that was, that was, you know, that was that. Um, and, um, you know, saying that, uh, you know, he would be more than happy to work alongside Jeff Gordon. Look, Everyone has an opinion on this. I feel very strongly about mine, okay? There's no doubt that Patrick Waugh has a great CV, Stu. Um, he was, for three seasons, the VP of Hockey Ops and the coach of the Colorado Avalanche. In the first season, he won Coach of the Year. Um, he's been with the Les Rampards du Québec for over a decade. He won a Memorial Cup. They make the playoffs pretty much every year. Uh, he assumes both responsibilities of coach and general manager. Here's where <clears throat> I think the problem lies. And that is, number one, I think the last thing this market needs is an emotional, impulsive general manager. That's number one. Number two, Patrick Waugh has um, the general manager, the, the VP of Hockey Ops here is going to be looking for loyalty. Uh, Patrick Waugh has not always been... Um, 
loyal to a team, a program, uh, or his coworkers. So, for example, um, and he hasn't he hasn't been willing to cooperate when he's not the number one guy. Uh, team Canada told him, "You're not going to, you know, you, we want you on the Olympic team. Well, am I going to be the number one goalie? No, okay, I'm not coming." Um, with Colorado, he bailed one month before pro camp because he wanted to have more power uh, and more decision making. And we knew that final sale belong, final say belonged to uh, general manager Joe Sackick. And Stu, for me, if you can't get along with Joe Sackick, one of the classiest guys to ever play the game, your former teammate, you won two Stanley Cups together. How is he going to get along with Jeff Gordon? And what I would see in my crystal ball, if he was given the position, I would see it erupt at one point. Everyone would know it erupted, whether or not Patrick spoke on the record or off the record. And at that point, what do you think is going to happen? A wave of public support for Patrick Roy, the gut she knew, the legend, the king, the little Roy, who won two Stanley Cups here and, and two Connie Smites here. And at that point, Jeff Gordon is done. He's finished. Well, Stu, I'm, I don't see it working out. I would give Patrick Roy like almost 0% chance of getting this job. I agree with you. You go back to his blow up with the Canadians with Mario Trombley. Him and Mario Trombley were roommates and friends when they were players, and they they butted heads, and we know what that led to. But no, I don't, I can't see Patrick Waugh being named. And I wrote a column the other day. If Patrick was brought in, I think his number one priority would be how am I going to get this American guy out of the job? And we saw that headline in the Journal de Montréal, and I think there's members of the French media who would be willing to help Patrick do that. You can see Patrick Lee, you know, I think it would just be, a, it would be a power struggle right from day one. Let me ask you something earlier today at the presser that it almost sound like one or two were campaigning for him. Oh, without a doubt. They're sort of like, what about Patrick? And will you talk to Patrick? And I understand. I mean, as you say, Patrick Wall has a resume and Patrick Wall was a, a main reason why the Kings won their last two Stanley Cups. Fans here love him. How do you think uh, Jeff Gordon handled it when asked about him? I thought he handled it perfectly. I thought he handled it perfectly when he's, he sort of was funny too. He says, yeah, I've heard of him, you know, when he was first asked about Patrick Waugh. And then he said, you know, I'm willing to listen. He said, I'm, he said, I'm not afraid of anything. Somebody asked him directly, would you be willing to work with somebody as emotional with him? I think it was Mark DeFoy, the journal, and he mentioned yeah. Cam Neely in Boston, who's a very emotional guy as the president. You know, you see yeah. him in the press box throwing bottles and getting upset. And Gordon said, I'm not afraid of anybody or anything. He did He did go on to mention that he knows that Patrick is very emotional and he knows a lot of people that know him. One of the things he talked about today is that he wants the GM to compliment him and he wants them to have a certain skill set that he does not. So he said, I never was a player and I never was an agent. That, that caught my... He mentioned an agent twice. Not once, twice. You know what it leads me to believe? That well, either the GM is going to be a former agent or... He'll open up two positions. Well, it and one be. is going to go to a player, former player, and one's going to go to a former agent. That or agent. The first time I saw one, okay, an agent, you know, the player, obviously, you know, Daniel Bear and, and Matthew Darsh are two of the guys who have been listed as the, the, the top, well, among the, the top candidates for the job, both former players. Uh, but when he mentioned the agent once, and then he said it twice, I started thinking, he's probably talking to an agent or, or has his eye on an agent, whether it might be Pat Brisson, it's obviously going to be somebody who speaks French. Um, so I found that, that was one of the interesting takeaways I had today when he mentioned it not once but twice. So we've all sort of been now. Could Pat Brisson be the general? He's you know the most influential agent in the hockey game today. Uh, I would think he's the one who's making the most money. Uh, his portfolio of list of players that he manages is or that he represents is pretty impressive. Um, what would he do in a case like that? Let's just say it interested in him. Would well, he become the general manager and have somebody be able to? Fill in. I mean, it's a conflict of interest, is it not? It would certainly be interesting. I mean, I don't know. First of all, we don't know if he's even interested in the job. But if let's hypothetically, if he is, if he was interested in it, I don't think he is. No, but if he was, you mentioned the money. He's probably got more money than he's ever going to need, and it might be a new challenge. And if it didn't work out, you go back to being a player agent. It's not the first time somebody would have gone from being a player agent to being uh, a GM of a team. Yeah. Um, and it's a high-profile position. You know, obviously, being GM of the Canadians, uh, he would have a relationship already with Gordon through negotiating with players, or from Gordon having been a GM, they would know each other. They would know. Bill Zito's a former agent. Yeah, they would know each other from a former from that standpoint. Pierre Lacroix was an agent. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm Michael saying. Michael Barnett was an agent. That's what I'm saying. And if you like this, you know, he had Brisson is a very a successful agent business, but it's not, you don't get a lot of, uh, you're not in the spotlight a lot as an agent, right? You're sort of in the background. Maybe he would be a guy that, and again, I don't know Pat Brisson at all. I'm just uh, 
maybe he'd be a guy that would like the spotlight and would enjoy sort of being there, especially when you got somebody you're working with also. But as again, that just, when he mentioned it once, okay. When he mentioned it twice, I, I started to think, okay, there's a, definitely sounds like there's an agent in mind that he's thinking of at least talking to about getting this job. All right. I want to very, very quickly here, very quickly. Uh, you touched on some of it. He needs to watch the team more. He, uh, he'll he talk with the coaches and the players. He'll meet with scouts. He'll hire a GM. He believes in analytics. He wants to modernize it and build out a staff. Uh, young players, young drafts need development help. He wants to set up a development team. Uh, he'll look outside the box when hiring a GM. Uh, we'll choose one to compliment them. Um, he says you want to hire people you trust and make decisions as a team. He also said in Boston and New York, he signed or acquired local players. It's important, especially in Montreal. He understands that. And uh, he's got a great feel for players. He has a great feel for people. He confirmed that it's a multi-year deal, but did not want to confirm the amount of term. He won't commit to anyone just yet. He won't say no to anyone yet. People can keep calling him. He says, um, he says being here the last couple of days, he can feel the frustration that the players have right now. Like you mentioned, he doesn't have an ego. He's not big on job titles. He just wants to help. Um, he's not thinking about what if it goes bad with a GM. He's focused on making sure that it goes good. He said the Rangers were good when he was there, but they weren't great. They had internal meetings. They discussed it. They decided on a rebuild. If he decides on a rebuild with the Canadians, they will be transparent, but he's going to need more time to take a look at the entire situation. Stu, do you think he goes the way of a rebuild? Yes or no? And if so, how early does it start? I think he does because he's already done it once and we see the results of it now when you look at how the Rangers are doing. So I think that that's, I think he was, when Jeff Molson brought him in here, I think that's one of the reasons he brought him in. Here's a guy who has experience doing it. It was a real surprise when he got fired by the Rangers. You know, that sort of caught people off guard when him and yeah. Jeff Ferguson got fired this season. It wasn't like he was doing a horrible job and they fired him. People were sort of caught by surprise when they Emotional, did. impulsive owner. So, exactly. So here's a guy who's, who's done it. And, you know, Tony, I can't say enough about coming into not only a hockey team, but any business, coming into any business as a leader, the head of the business from the outside. You have no personal relationship with anybody working for you. You might know a little bit of you have no person, you know, for Mark Bergevin to, to trade Carey Price, it would be hard to trade Brendan Gallagher would be hard to trade. Correct. Jeff Petrie would be hard. He has a personal, you know, he was in tears when he, after announcing the contract that Gallagher signed. So it'd be hard for Bergevin because of the personal attachment. Correct. So well said. But a guy coming in from the outside and not just in hockey in any business, if you're running a newspaper business and you, yeah. and you want to get rid of somebody, it's easier to get rid of them. If you don't, have that emotional voice. attachment is there. Even if Bergevin was thinking of doing it, he's the one who gave them the contracts and the yep. extension. So then maybe you think twice he could come in, he can have a chat with some of these guys and say, listen, for the good of the organization, nothing personal. This is what we're going to do. I'd love to be able to accommodate you. Tell me where you want to go. And if I can make it happen, I'll keep that in consideration and I'll make it happen. All right. And so nothing, um, nothing personal is the key thing you said there, Tony. As I yeah. mentioned earlier, things would get personal with Mark Bergeron. Just come in and say, look, let's say it is Carrie Plus. Carrie, nothing personal. Your record speaks for yourself. The Canadians appreciate everything you've ever done for them, even though I'm not here. We'd like to move you. You have a no movement clause. Tell us where you would like to go. And if you're willing to do that, and then I will do my best to send you somewhere that you want to go. All right. Any player, any team, whether it's hockey or any sports, sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and even our sick merchandise. Use code 615 for 15% off on all of their items. Thanks, Stu. We'll do it again soon. Take care, Tony. Stu Cowan from uh, the Montreal Gazette and HockeyInsideOut.com. It's now time to make some money. Money. Money, money. All right, he's uh, my buddy at Run My Bets. Is your handle? He's my buddy Cash. Cash, what do you got for me? Uh, what's happening, guys? I have a I have a pretty solid game uh, Saturday. Nashville Predators and Montreal Canadiens, uh, guys. This year it's been working out great. I've been fading Montreal, and uh, their record says it. If you've been betting against them, you have made money. Now here's the thing, guys. I'm not looking to take the Nashville. They're about minus one eighty. It's not a really big payout. I'm looking to go big on minus one and a half goals or even the regulation line if you can get something like that. I think there's tremendous value in there. I see Nashville coming in and winning by a few goals, three, four, maybe even. Uh, guys, I'm not even going to shy away from taking a, an alternative line like minus two and a half. I really think this game can get ugly. I would include Nashville money line in your parlays if you're doing them tomorrow. I really like Nashville minus one and a half regulation line. Get some money down on Nashville. They're going to win tomorrow against Montreal. And Cash, let's not forget the Montreal Canadiens will be without Josh Anderson, Brendan Gallagher, Sammy Niku, 
and Jeff Petrie. At the very least, we'll see if there's anything else. So, yeah, uh, and let's not forget the Canadians spanked Nashville pretty good a couple of weeks ago at the Bell Centre, and uh, the Predators probably have some uh, revenge, redemption on their minds. Yes. Is that it? That's the pick? That's it. Guys, bet this earlier than later. This line will move. He's Cash. I'm Marinero, the Sick Podcast.